Hello everyone, welcome back to Explorer Electronics. In this video, let's see switching modulator. How this switching modulator is going to generate the AM wave. So what is switching modulator? Switching modulator is a type of modulator. This circuit is going to generate an amplitude modulated wave. So we are going to use this switching modulator whenever the AM wave generation is required. So you can see the circuit over here. This is M of T. As we know, M of T is a modulating signal or we call it as a message signal or we call it as a baseband signal. So all these names are same. We call it as a modulating signal M of T. This will be added up with C of T. What, what is this C of T means? Carrier signal. So we know in AM, we require a carrier signal with high frequency FC compared to FM of a modulating signal and also AC of the amplitude of the carrier signal should be greater than AM of the modulating signal. So these are the two conditions we need to satisfy while doing the amplitude modulation. So this is about the amplitude modulation. Let us come back to this switching modulator. So this circuit is going to generate the AM wave at the output. So here we require a adder or we call it as summer to add M of T as well as C of T. Carrier signal and the message signal are going to be added up here. This summer can be designed using op-amp or any other circuitry. This will be a generally an adder we can say. So the output of the addition will be taken as V1 of T. This will be given to a switching diode. Generally this one will be a PN junction diode. The output of this will be V2 of T. This is the output of the diode circuit. Then V2 of T will be given to the bandpass filter with the cutoff frequency as well as the bandwidth is set. So the bandpass filter output will be an AM wave. This is what the brief introduction to switching modulator. Now let us see the circuit. Here in this circuit, the same switching modulator is shown, but band pass filter is not shown. Okay, let us see up to V2 of T first. Here also we have M of T. It is connected in series with C of T means here we are adding these two. Superimposed C of T and M of T means it is adding only. Here the adder is not shown. So the addition of those two will be V1 of T as I said. Here we will be having a diode and at the output we are taking V2 of T through RL load resistor. And now the thing is that we need to understand how this V2 of T will be generated out of this diode. Means V1 of T will be addition of M of T and C of T. So this is what V1 of T is. As we know this is M of T and C of T. And we know that AC means that is the amplitude of the carrier wave. We are going to maintain it is it should be more than the amplitude of the modulating signal. So AC will be obviously more than AM. Since AC is more than AM, so if you see the uh, total amplitude will be the addition of AM and AC. So AC is more, so the effect of the diode output will be depending on AC. Or we say the output will be depending on the carrier wave, more on carrier wave. So if the carrier wave is more than the zero, more than zero, we can say diode will be forward biased whenever AC is greater than 0. When AC is less than 0, we can say diode is reverse biased. So we are going to get the output only when AC or the carrier wave amplitude is more than 0. And carrier wave amplitude is less than 0 means diode will be reverse biased. We are not going to get the output across RL. So this is explained in this diagram. So in the x-axis we are taking V1. This is the V1. In y-axis we are taking V2 that is this V1 is the input to the diode and this V2 is the output of the output after the diode. So you can see here as V1 increases the V2 also increases whenever AC is greater than 0. What happens when V1 is less than 0? V2 becomes 0 means when this V1 of T is less than 0 means what happens? Where diode will be off and V2 becomes 0. That's why it is 0 when V1 is equal to 0 or V1 is less than 0. 
that is what it is indicating v1 and v2 are directly proportional when the v1 is greater than when v1 is less v1 is less means what the diode getting negative values uh, uh, here you can see these negative are the uh, half cycles what we have here we will be having the negative values in those negative values the diode will not conduct at that time we say the output of the diode at rl across rl v2 will be zero otherwise it is as v1 increases v2 increases so here you can see v2 of t is equal to v1 of t when c of t is greater than zero otherwise it is zero now you can see the output of diode will be depending on c1 of t and this varies between zero and v1 of t we come to know that zero to v1 of t only the output will be varies and this will be having a frequency fc and that time period or the rate of having the voltage across that rl will be t naught t naught can be written as 1 divided by fc now this time period you can see over here this t naught will be this to this this is the period or the uh, pulse we are going to get as a output across rl now this period periodic pulse strain will be represented as gp of t generally gt naught of t this is an infinite signal so representing this gp of t in a fourier transform this will be representation so this is from n1 to infinite so here if you take only n1 into consideration and the next thing will be generated as the n increases 1 by 2 plus 2 divided by pi and this term becomes 2 divided by pi into cos of this plus it's go on so it will be up to infinite so now gp of t can be replaced over here with this expression so v2 becomes m of t plus ac into cos 2 pi of ct into that gp of t term you can see over here just multiply these two and get the expression for v2 of t as 1 by 2 into m of t plus 2 by pi m of t cos 2 pi of ct this will be multiplied with m of t we are going to get this okay this 1 by 2 multiply with this we are going to get this term again these two cos terms are going to be getting this term now this v2 of t will be having up to infinite will be having the terms up to infinity now we need to pass through a band pass filter with a keeping the center frequency or the band pass filter center frequency is f fc and the bandwidth of that is 2 fm 2 times fm with this we can able to generate the am wave let us see so now this is the signal what we have now if we apply that v2 of t to a band pass filter with the center frequency fc and we know that 2 fm is the it should be the bandwidth now the output of this let us represent it as v2 dash of t it will be 2 divided by pi means this term and this term you can see over here 2 by pi m of t cos 2 pi f c t this is same as this and ac divided by 2 cos 2 pi f c t this is the term we are going to get after band pass filter keeping the center frequency f c now taking ac divided by 2 common it becomes 1 ac divided by 2 over here is taken as common with this term so this becomes 1 plus and here there is no ac divided by 2 so 2 into 2 get multiplied 2 divided by pi into ac and then m of t and we are writing this term outside cos 2 pi of ct now we need to compare this this is the output of the band pass filter with the standard function or the standard am wave what we have the standard am wave is s of t is equal to ac divided by 2 into 1 plus ka this is amplitude sensitivity into m of t that represents the modulating signal cos 2 pi f c t now if we compare this with this you can see ac divided by 2 as it is 1 plus 4 divided by pi into ac is our amplitude sensitivity and this is m of t this is our cos term now this is the am wave we are going to get at the output of the band fast filter this is how we can generate the am wave using switching modulator 
So this is about the switching modulator. In the next video, let us see how demodulation works. Means that is envelope detector, how it is going to detect and recover the modulating signal back. Thank you.